Trips to France always involve a lot of preparation, tying enough rigs to sink a ship in the lounge, preparing your special hut baits, respooling your line, charging all your equipment, and let's not forget spending endless hours on the lake's website and Facebook pages, searching for information in the hope of giving yourself a little edge. Although those pre-book dates seem like ages away, they soon came round quickly. With a busy summer schedule and arriving back home from a holiday only the night before, I had one day to do all my preparation. Oh, what a glorious sunset. And the first fish for me. There she is. She is in. Well, what a brilliant start. So yeah, Paul's obviously had one, nice 32 pounder. And yeah, this one rattled off just as it was going dark. And at 38 pound, that's a really good sized fish for this lake. In the morning, yeah, I'll talk to you a little bit about the venue. Now, obviously throughout this video, we'll show you the tactics and all those sorts of things that we're using. Um, but yeah, happy days. What a start, a real unique character this one, obviously with a, yeah, a little bit of a split fin and my other rod's rattling off a best go. So that run that you heard in the background, it wasn't actually this one. That run was a, yeah, tiny little catfish. And this one came soon after to the same spot. And uh, yeah, we've also got another one um, just in the net, literally just gone off as soon as I put it out as well. Yeah, another common um, going really well. So that's um, between us. So one mirror for me, two commons for me. Yeah, and a, and a lovely mirror for Paul as well. So cracking start hopefully uh, we could be in once again for an absolutely cracking cracking session Right, well, I don't think I've ever had, yeah, a session like this. So, so many bites coming so quickly. I think the time's only two o'clock. Um, sort of one every, one every truck, one every 10 minutes at the moment. I think that's either four or five for me now. Um, yeah, the unusual shape, this one. 
sort of really heavy at the front and uh, yeah, a bit of a, a droopy tail, but yeah, I love the fish. Happy days. Well, what a night. Literally had two hours sleep. This is fish number eight. Yeah, lovely, uh, yeah, lovely mirror, got mid-20. And uh, yeah, we've got a really nice common in the net as well. Uh, Paul's had a bream, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> you not tell Shouldn't that. mention that, shouldn't mention that. <laughs> yeah, Paul's had a bream, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but never, ever had a session like this, sort of, or a night like that, sort of to have, yeah, nine in a night is Unreal, such good fun. Well, probably the long, one of the longest commons I've ever caught. Uh, yeah, really unusual shape, sort of really thin, obviously spawned out, massive head on it. And this one gave me a right rook. I was pretty certain it was a catfish. Um, yeah, lovely fish. I do love a little long link common. Yeah, so the, the 30 pound is very welcome. And the last one of the mad spell last night. At the start of the video, I did say that I'd talk to you a little bit about wild boar. So the reason why we bought this initially was that there was there was no other lakes free. Obviously after our successful trip to, to Attila, um, yeah, back in April, we wanted to come back again just to, yes, yeah, if we could get a few more fish and wild boar was the one that we chose. We have fished it once before. So we fished it um, October time, so autumn time, a couple of years back before, before COVID hit. Uh, and did really well. We had, I think me and Paul had 18 out each that time. So yeah, we're on the way to sort of those sort of figures, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed. Now, just to give you a bit of a background for wild boar for people that have never fished it before. So the actual lake size, you're looking around about 14 acres in size. And the way that I look at this lake, it's sort of split into two halves. So you've got the deep end, the, the, the main bowl, the main body of the water is the deep end of the water. You're looking at the deepest part of the lake is, is 20, around right about 21 foot. Um, that's what I'm getting. And then, yeah, this bowl, it does have some really nice margins, which are a little bit shallower, but the shallow, the, the margins are still quite deep. Uh, and we're currently in peg one. So that's the main body of the water. And then the, the second section of the water. So we're in peg one at the moment. And just to my left hand side, the lake is sort of split in half. And this is where it was dug out, I'm guessing. So this was dug out in 2014. It was originally two different lakes. Um, so yeah, you've got the main bowl, which is like just on the back of Kingfisher, which is one of the other lakes on the Abbey Lakes complex. And then, yeah, the other side, so that's uh, like a narrow sort of channel and you've got two, two narrow ends there um, and that shallower, shallower water uh, over there, you're looking around about two meters in depth. That area of the lake is a little bit more weedy, um, but you, you know, obviously I can see from the drone because I've, I've had it up just to get some shots of the lake. There's plenty of clear spots over there. And yeah, the main bowl of the water, you've just got a little bit of weed in, in the margins and then it just, yeah, shells right off and there's, and there's no weed whatsoever. Um, yeah, the stocking wise, they, they don't give an, an exact number on the stocking, which is always difficult anyway, isn't it? But they say hundreds of fish. Um, this is, is the runs water of, of the complex. So yeah, if you are coming over here, maybe you've never been to France before, this would be an ideal one to, to start with. Um, obviously when we've been, we've always had fish, but as always, you've got to be on the fish to, to catch them. Otherwise you're not, you're not gonna have them. But if you are on the fish, as you saw with, with me last night, you can have some amazing action. 
Um, so yeah, this lake, it would be really good if you'd never been to, to France, France before, maybe you haven't handled sort of bigger fish over 40 pound before and you just want to get used to that. Or if you know maybe a little bit older, so my dad said this, this lake would be ideal for him. He's got sort of a little bit of arthritis in his hands. He's got a bit of a bad back as well. And he might struggle to handle fish sort of over 40 pound or over 50 pounds. So yeah, this lake would be ideal for him. The actual biggest, um, yeah, the biggest fish in this lake is a fish known as Starburst, which is 50 pounder. And I believe it's the only 50 pounder in the lake. So the average fish that you're looking to catch is mainly around about the 30 pound mark. Um, yeah, we've had two forties. Last time we had two forties, we hadn't had any forties this time. And out of the, the 10 carp that we've caught so far, the biggest one has been 38 with a few 30s thrown in. So yeah, if you're looking for that sort of venue, this will be the ideal place for you. Well, good morning. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty stunned to be honest. I haven't had anything at all. Yeah, not even a bleep actually, no liners or anything. Um, to go from sort of, yeah, eight carp in the night or nine carp in the night, whichever it was, uh, last night and then nothing is, is a real, real shocker. Um, yeah, I'm guessing the reason why I had so many fish last night was that they, yeah, they were on the move. So they've either, they're either moving from the they've either moved from the main body of the water into that shallow area, or they've gone from the shallow area into the main body of water, and that's where I was catching them. So yeah, a little bit of thinking and a little bit of working out to do. I will have a walk around the lake and see if I can find them because you know on any water you need to be on the fish, otherwise you're not going to catch them, and that just shows. You know, last night so from nine for one night to to zero on the other night so definitely need to think and yeah we could be on the move but but we'll see um yeah i'll keep you updated either way so i've just reeled the rods in and yeah i know why i blanked now well i know why i blanked i don't know how it's happened yet i need to have a think about it so i've reeled in uh, two rods and i've had no bait on them at all and those were the two rods that, that were going um I don't think it's crazed because of the, the putty still on, uh, the rig's still nice and clean and all of those sorts of things. Um, but what I am going to do, I'm going to shrink wrap them anyway just to be on the safe side. Um, I have been on bait screws, so I'm going to take those off 
I'm just going to put on swivels and shrink wrap them just to be 100% safe. Uh, I'm also going to take off the putty completely, even though it hasn't been touched. And I uh, just really critically balance uh, those, those essential fruit pop-ups. So that's going to be the plan. Um, if I don't have anything at 11 o'clock uh, at night by then, I'm definitely just going to refresh uh, two of the rods just to, just to make sure that they are okay, just to double check them because I, the last thing I want is to have that happen again. Um, yeah, obviously all the actions at night time, so sleeping during the day, yeah, and then waking up obviously early afternoon. So I'm gonna go and get my head down now. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll have some action. So it's a cat or a common. Mirror. Nice fish, yeah. That. This is ridiculous, Paul. Isn't it? Well, after, yeah, blank last night, finally got one. Really, really happy, obviously, Paul's had one as well. She's, she's angry and she's ready to, yeah, ready to go back. So another incredible night for me and Paul. This was the fifth one uh, of the night for me. Paul's had two. You had two, Paul? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Paul's had two. Yeah, and this, as I said, this one's the biggest. Um, yeah, an incredible session. So how, how many is that, did he say? 14? 14. Yeah, 14 for me. Uh, yeah, a little rig change as well. I reeled in the other day and had no baits on whatsoever. So yeah, a little bit of shrink wrap over those baits. They're all coming over the new baits as well, so the new fish meal, the jungle remix and the Mark II. Absolutely brilliant. So we're just going to talk about the bait that we're using during this session and the actual mix itself. Really straightforward and really easy to prepare and it's going to be a boily heavy mix the reason why we've gone for that yeah is, is because of the number of the small fish in here the number of bream and all those sorts of things so yeah it's basically a two scoop combo so two scoops of absolutely everything so first off i'm putting two scoops of the new fish meal in there 
This is an absolutely fantastic new bait. At the actual base of this, you've got sardine and anchovy meal. There's two different liquid hydrobes in there uh, and crustacean and lobster flavoring and loads and loads of spices in there as well. So there's two scoops of that that go in. From there, you're then gonna put uh, two scoops of the Salamino Mark II in there. In that bait, there's loads of liquid liver, there's black pepper essential oil. Yeah, and the Salamino is my favorite bait in the range and the Mark II is something absolutely special. So yeah, two scoops of that and then two scoops of the Jungle Remix. This is a nut-based mix. There's all sorts in here, um, loads and loads of different hydros. There's a combination of hydros in there. And then you've got really nice bun spice flavoring in there as well, an absolute classic flavoring. After that, you're then gonna put in two scoops of the dark side mix, and this is from Carbon Baits. And in that, you've got hemp, you've got maple peas, there's all sorts of little different combinations in there. You've also got some nice red maize in there, so it's a really dark coloring. And then after that, I'm then putting in two scoops of maize. And then finally, just to finish that off and just to stodge that mix up a bit, I'm putting in two scoops of boilie crumb and that's all three of our boilies. And then I'm mixing that together and then also add in some water. The reason why I'm doing that, I do want the mix to be really, really heavy. Obviously I'm fishing in 20 foot of water. So as, as much water as possible that I can get into that bait to soak in, it means it'll sink down into that water column onto a lake bed far quicker. The amount of bait that we've used during the session. So we've been here for three days so far. So the amount of bait that we've gone through, you're looking around about 60 to 70 kilo of bait between us. So you're talking, yeah, 40 kilo of boily and uh, yeah, around about 30 kilo of maize and the dark side mix. Obviously it's summer and we're catching a lot of fish. So, you know, when you actually look at the amount that we're putting in, you're only, we're only really putting in two scoops into the, into the actual, um, into the bait boat. So not a massive amount, but obviously when you are catching, it does build up really, really quickly. So if you are coming here and you do get on the fish, just make sure that you do bring plenty of bait with you. With most of the bites coming at night, Preparation was key. Fresh rigs were tied with brand new hook baits put on. And the rods were put out an hour before dark. Myself and Paul were treated to a wonderful sunset that evening and as we came into the night, anticipation was high. At two o'clock, Paul's alarm was the first to go, but it didn't go as planned. And although I landed a few in the night, it wasn't until first light when the bigger fish arrived. Well, another busy night for me and Paul. It's a little bit of a comedy of errors. Uh, he wiped himself out, then he wiped me out twice, then I wiped him out. Yeah, this one was the biggest for me. Ended up reeling in around about five o'clock. I think I had five or six last night. Yeah, Paul's had two and had an absolute stonker this morning as well.
great night for me and Paul. Yeah, absolutely shattered. The time is now, I think it's around about half past nine in the morning. I'm gonna go to sleep in a minute. Um, yeah, I think I've managed about an hour all the way through the night. So yeah, get my head down, charge everything, get everything ready, and then get my head down for a few hours. But in terms of things that I've definitely learned, so that, that second night where I had that blank where I just had nothing at all, obviously reeled in, had no, um, had no hook baits on at all. Um, one thing that I did do last night, so uh, 11 o'clock, reeled in, refreshed them, and basically within 10 minutes I had a fish straight away. Um, I had, did have hook baits on, but interestingly enough, what I did do, I just took the shrink wrap off and just put fresh hook baits on without it, and then just sent them out. Um, yeah, what I am thinking now, I don't think it's crazy. So the, the, the putty was still on, you know, everything's fine, so yeah crazy we're obsessed with putty aren't they so yeah my my assumption on this is that it's roach and bream so basically if i'm putting the rods out at five half five at night say or half five in the evening um i think all the roach and the bream are feeding then like mad they're basically mullering your hook baits there'll probably be no bait left at all all around your area um yeah and there's going to be nothing then for the carp when they start feeding so bite time you're looking between yeah 11 o'clock at night all the way through to yeah early hours of the morning and first light so yeah it's really important to obviously if you are coming this time of year so we're now in august all the bites are going to be at night time more than likely so definitely just refresh those uh, yeah refresh your rods at 11 o'clock if you haven't had anything because my assumption is there's, there's just no bait left there at all. It's just the bream, because there is a lot of bream in here, um, yeah, and everything else. So that's a little tip for you. Hope that helps. Well, what a brilliant start to, to our yeah, pun Pummelton at night. Oh, we've got three nights left. Ah, love Earl for coming. Yeah, mid 30. Really, really happy. It's been unusually quiet. It's now about half two in the morning. Reset those rods at half past 11. This is the first one to roll. So, another busy night total of five fish reeled in in the end and three just before sort of first light I have just rested them in the sling two scaly ones which is really nice yeah they're really big absolutely buzzing I'm going to show you the other side of this one as well because it is really nice So that's the second scaly one of the evening. Yeah, and as we're photographing that last one, they're all rattled off. And I think I recognise that one as well. Yeah, absolutely buzzing with this one. Proper little English fish, really. Stunning, stunning. And that's the final one of the evening. And that one that's just rattled off. That's what we're doing these. Was it? Ooh. 
Well, I think we're going to nickname this, uh, this one the Mugfish. I'm pretty certain Paul had this one a couple of days ago at £39. Yeah, the, the colours are really, really, really unique on it. And I think he, yeah, he had it at night. And I've had it first thing this morning. While I was slipping the fish back, Paul had bobbed to Lou, and in typical carp fishing fashion, his rod rattled off midway through relieving himself. Do you rack off? Yeah, it screamed off, Did and it? the swans were feeding here, and it just went. Mmm. And I looked over at the swans and all. And they went. Mmm. I legged it. Thought the swans had tangled you up. So we're just about to get the rods out for the evening and yeah, I'll quickly show the rigs that we're using. So we did start with helicopter rigs but using particle and the fish not moving about very much. The hook holes were a little bit dodgy there so yeah we've gone to heavier lead so four ounce lead, uh, a leg clip and a slightly shorter rig you're looking around about seven inches in length. Yeah as usual for me it's a, a Ronnie rig with a little bit of putty in the middle just to obviously pin that um, soft coated hook lint down. The actual hook that I'm using is a size 4 clinger and they're absolutely fine for France. We're using these on a tiller last time and the hook holes yeah, are, are incredible. And then finally, yeah, we've got around about three foot of leg core just to pin that down into a lake bed. And then hook bait wise, so the actual colour at the moment, it seems to be orange is the one and I am running low on my orange hook baits. I have a couple on pink and of course these as always are the essential fruit hook baits yeah from bait guru so that's the rig that we're using during the session feel free to use that down here if you are fishing wild boar at abbey lakes well what a stunning little fish yeah and a rare evening bite for me um yeah coming over pink i've put pink on all three rods this is fish number 27 for me This has literally just gone out. Put the swinger on after that fish and it's rattled off. Right, go on girl. So that's fish number 28 and it's still only 10 o'clock at night. The conditions are looking absolutely amazing. The wind's picked, picked up, finally no mosquitoes and uh, this could be really, really busy, busy evening. So, um, yeah, this isn't the biggest fish in the lake by a long shot, but it's a really significant number. So this is actually fish number 30. Uh, yeah, we miscounted before because the, the little common that uh, Paul landed was, was 29. Yeah, and this one's 30. And I've just had a, another one, a little common, which we just slipped straight back. So yeah, it's still early. I reckon it's around about 12 o'clock now. Um, so yeah, get some fresh hook baits on, get this rub back out. And you never know. Uh, yeah, one of the bigger ones might turn up. Okay. That's uh, fish number 33. Let's get it back. Go on, go on, go on. So we've got another small common. I'm really unlucky with the sizes tonight. Um, yeah, there's been a few that we just haven't bothered photographing, so this is the seventh of the thing. Come on. Oh, darling. There you go. And now we're getting smaller. Go on, go and tell your big mates. No small ones, please. Wow, good morning. 
here have been un really unfortunate with the sizes. Last night, I don't know what time it is, I'm, it's about half eight this morning. Uh, this one feels small as well. Mirror and she looks a bit darker. Oh, yeah, she's a better fish. She's a better fish. That's a big fish, that. Well, what a brilliant way to end the session. Yeah, after going through all those fish last night, all those small ones. This one there, uh, yeah, this one finally went off. It's a 37 pound. What a session. As is customary for me and Paul, if one of us isn't catching much, the spots are handed over to the other angler for the final day and night. We've done this for many years and it was time for me to return the favour. After me catching so many fish and Paul helping so much throughout the week, it was only right. And of course that's what friends are for. And after showing him the exact spots I was fishing and how I was preparing my hook baits, within minutes Paul was hooked into a fish. In. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done, fella. Good, yeah, mate. Buzzing, fella. For the final night, I was planning to get to bed early as I wasn't fishing, but the fish had other ideas, with Paul struggling to keep three rods in the water and at first light he was still awake. Although he'd landed several in the night, there wasn't anything really worth filming, but just before packing up, Paul had another flurry of action. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, same one, but Mark is It's the same fish, three times. <laughs> it must absolutely love that bait. Go do, on it. <laughs> <laughs> right, what an end to an incredible session. This one, I think we're now, instead of the mugs fish, we're now gonna call it the, uh, the bait guru pet. Uh, yeah, three times we've had it. Uh, Paul's now had it twice. I've had it once. Um, yeah, and that's the end of the session. So how many did you have? 12 all in all. Yeah, and how many last night? Five last night. Five last night, yeah. And I didn't fish last night, so I had 37. Paul's had 12, so yeah, well over 50 fish between us in a week. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible testing the new bait. So thank you for watching. See you on the bank sometime. And we'll see you in the next one. Paul's last 24 hours were a fitting way to end a session neither of us will ever forget. And with next year's trip to Abbey Lakes already booked, we can't wait to return.